Hi, my name is Cody Hosterman, and I'm going to be walking you through configuring the Pure One VM Analytics Collector on Ubuntu. The collector pulls in your vCenter performance statistics, VMs, clusters, and hosts, dials them back to Pure One for deeper analytics. Let's walk through. The first process is to create a new virtual machine. I'll go to New Virtual Machine Wizard, then I'll give it a name. In this case, I'll just call it my VM Collector. I'll then choose a location and a data store, VVols, of course. Choose the latest version of VM hardware. And now I want to change it to Linux. And since it's going to be running on Ubuntu 64-bit, we will then choose Ubuntu 64-bit. The next step is to configure the virtual hardware. The minimum is two vCPUs that we support, so I'll make it two. Two gigs is the minimum for memory, but I'll make it four to give a little bit more. And I'll do 100 gigs for storage. Probably don't need that much, but I'm doing it anyways. It's then provisioned. Now I want to connect my Ubuntu ISO, ISO and this is going to be 16.04.5. 16.04 is the minimum we support. And then make sure that it connects when I boot it up. I'll go ahead and complete the wizard, verify the information, and then boot up that virtual machine. Now, of course, if you already have an Ubuntu template, you can deploy from that template. Uh, you don't have to go through this whole install process. I'm just walking through the beginning in case anyone's curious. So go ahead and power on that virtual machine. And then when it's powered on, we'll go into take a look at the web console. All right, let's find my, my collector. There it is. Of course, you can use the remote console too if you prefer. So I'll choose my language, English, install Ubuntu, and I'll run through. I'll choose my English uh, for my language for the installer, location. I'll manually do the keyboard, so English, English, and let that configure. Now the next step is to give it an IP. Now if you're using DHCP, it'll pull up a DHCP address right now. I don't have that configured, so I need to manually enter in my IP information. So first thing I need to do is give it an IP address. Ideally, you should configure this IP address with reverse and forward lookup in your DNS before this. Enter in my gateway, netmask, and of course my DNS server. It'll automatically pull in the name from my DNS. Of course, you can type it if it doesn't pull it in. And the one thing here, you have to create a new user. Ubuntu disables the root account by default. So I'll give myself a name, username Cody. And then, of course, I'll enter in the password and then confirm it. This is the user account you'll use to initially log in when configuring the collector. I won't encrypt my home directory. And let's go ahead and start configuring that. So I want to change my time zone. I'm not in New York. I'm on in California. So I'll change Pacific. And let this run. So I'm just going to use the entire disk, keep it simple. And so I'll choose my virtual disk and confirm the changes. And that'll go ahead and format it with the XD4. I'm not going to use a proxy, so I'll lose that blank. And I'll go ahead and configure the rest. I'll apply so it installs security updates automatically, which is the recommended option. The only other thing we want to add here from a feature perspective is the SSH server, so we can SSH into this host. And it'll go ahead and finish the installation process of Ubuntu. Doesn't take particularly long. I'll have it install the Grub bootloader because I'm not dual booting. All right, and then I'm going to go here. Next, all we'll do is remove the ISO um, from this VM. It's no longer needed. Ubuntu is installed. So I'll go ahead, edit settings, and go to my CD DVD drive and just change it back to the client so it's no longer using that ISO file on the data store. Hit OK. Then go back to my VM and hit continue so it will reboot itself. Doesn't take very long to shut down and certainly doesn't take very long to boot up either. So I'll boot into Ubuntu and it's pretty much ready to go. 
So the next step here is we'll bring up Putty and I'm going to SSH into this VM. So put in your IP or your FPDN and connect to that Ubuntu VM. First time connecting, so accept the thumbprints, give my username, my password. And now let's start configuring this VM. So the first thing we need to do is we need to install Docker. All right, so the, one of the requirements of this collector is to run Docker, right? The collector itself is a container. And this is fairly well documented. You can look at my blog post for the individual commands and you can copy and paste them directly as I'm doing right here. So the first thing we'll do is uh, run an update. Of course, you have to use sudo, so give your password once. That'll go ahead and update. And then we'll move forward. Next up is to enable HTTPS. And then we need to get the Docker key, so we'll enter that in. That'll bring in the key. Cool. And complete the configuration for that. Okay, so that's the prereqs for Docker are ready to go. So we need to update one more time here to make sure everything's completely up to date. So the libraries and so forth, we need to install Docker there. And now let's install Docker. So all, I'm installing the Docker Community Edition, aka CE. We also support the Enterprise Edition, EE. But for this case, let's go simple and just install the Community Edition. So this will download the packages and then go and configure uh, and install Docker on this Ubuntu VM. All right, Docker's now installed. Now the last step here is we want to change the log rotation so it goes hourly. This will allow the logs to rotate every hour so then they can be dialed back to pure one. Make sure you don't forget to do that, otherwise you won't see the statistics showing up very frequently. So now we want to log into pure one. So I'll log into pure one with my login information. And then you want to click on VM topology. From there you go to the little gear icon towards the top and you'll click create collector. So I'll give it a name. It's friendly names can really be anything. It doesn't have to match the name of your collector, the host name, but just make, make it something that makes sense to you. Right? That's unique. That will create it and it'll also prepare a little installation script that you need to run. And so you can copy that and you'll be able to directly paste this into your VM. So back into putty, I'm going to type sudo because I need to do that. And then I'll paste in what's um, Pure One gave to me to run. And this, what this will do is automatically download and install the collector. There's nothing really you need to configure or change. You just copy and paste that script directly into this Ubuntu VM. Pretty, pretty simple. So that'll download everything that's needed, configure certificates and the connections and so forth. And, and when you run it, it gives it a unique identifier. So Pure One will automatically know, hey, this is your collector. This is the one that should be associated with your organization in Pure One. So the last thing I want to do is I want to authenticate my vCenters. So I'm going to add one of my vCenters here. You can use read-only credentials. That's perfectly fine. And you can add as many vCenters as you want. And this, once you add that vCenter and authenticate it, every 600 seconds it will collect the VM topology, performance information, all that type of stuff. And then every hour it will dial it back to Pure One so it can be processed. So then you can see your VM performance information, capacity, uh, uh, throughput, IOPS, and so forth inside of Pure One. And you're done. Pretty simple. So that's demonstration of setting it up. Um, you can take a look and monitor your vCenters and their collection status by running Pure VM Analytics List. That's the new CLI command that gets entered in. And you can see what's going on with your vCenters. Now jump into Pure One and you can see what's going on. Thanks a lot.